all the body parts are the workers. And who's the boss of the show? Who's the foreman telling everyone, making sure everyone's on the same page? Anyone want to guess? Brain. Brain, exactly. So we've got the brain telling the body what to do and the body talking back to the brain. And so this is another crucial component of health because if you put some good food in your belly but your stomach can't digest it, you can't take full advantage of that. If you think of Christopher Reeve as a good example. You guys know who Christopher Reeve was? He used to play Superman in the old movies. What happened to Christopher Reeve is he was riding his horse and he fell off his horse and he broke his neck. And what happened after he broke his neck? Paralyzed. Paralyzed, right? He couldn't move. He couldn't move his arms or his legs. What else? Other things happened is he had to be put on a ventilator to help him breathe. He had to be fed through a tube because his stomach wasn't working properly. He had to be put on dialysis because his kidneys weren't filtering. I was told that someone had to massage his bladder because he couldn't go to the bathroom on his own. So the point with that is, when he fell, he injured what? His brain, his spinal cord, exactly. He injured up here. He didn't injure all these body parts, but yet the body parts stopped working, right? So that's how important that brain-body connection is. If your brain and your body aren't talking, you're out of luck. So if, if you're, you'd say you're not a, a horse rider, or you don't fall off things and, and break your neck, well, how does that relate to you? Well, what can happen is if you think of, let's say this is your spinal cord, it's surrounded by the bones of your spine. So Christopher Reeve, he broke the bone completely. There's severe damage to the spinal cord. So the spinal bones are stacked up on top of each other. They're protecting the spinal cord. So what happens if that bone slips out of place, that bone twists, that bone turns? What's going to happen to the nerves running through the spinal cord? Same thing. Same thing, exactly. It's not going to be all or none, but there's going to be disturbance to that nerve flow from the brain down to the body. If we start to disturb that nerve flow, anyone know what that's called? Socialization. You guys are good. <laughs> I'll write it in different colors. So, subluxation. That's when the bone goes out of place and it disturbs the connection between the brain and the body. And so why do I bring that up during a nutrition talk? Well, the fact is, let me show you. A lot of you, since you've been here before, you've had these scans done. What these scans do is they measure the nerves along your spine. And they measure if there's disturbance to those nerves. Well, this is a person, when I did his scan, he had a lot of activity here and here. You notice this big clump right here? Where do you think this goes in his body? This is to the nerves, the stomach, the pancreas, the gallbladder, the intestines, all the nerves that control digestion. So he had something known as colitis. He had inflammation of his digestive tract. When he ate certain foods, his body didn't respond well. We started getting him adjusted. Suddenly he was able to eat foods again that he had never been able to eat before. So the reason I bring that up is you can have really solid nutrition, but if you don't have a good brain-body connection, you can, in a sense, be wasting your money. You go out and you buy good organic foods, but if your stomach can't pull all the good nutrients from that, it's not gonna be as beneficial. 